Right, so 16 submissions were received by the IEC for independent candidates to campaign in the 2024 elections, but only a few made it to the provisional lists. Five national candidates and six provincial seats were approved uh, by the independent electorate uh, first for South Africa. So what do some of our candidates have in store for us? Well, we continue with our feature of profiling uh, independent candidates. And this morning we speak to a candidate contesting for a seat in the Free State uh, Legislature. We are joined by Sissing Ramutsabodi, uh, who joins us now in studio. Sissing, good morning to you. Congratulations, firstly, thank on you, making thank it. You, thank I think uh, one of, the, one of the, 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 the big questions that has come up as we speak to independent candidates has been just the mammoth task yeah. of actually getting all the signatures that you need to make it onto uh, that final candidate list. Right? Talk to us about, firstly, what made you want to run, and then that, that journey for you, how difficult that was for you. Look, I mean, there are several reasons that made me run. You know, obviously, the obvious issues like the collapse of local, local government, the collapse of public health unemployed youth, the influx of uh, illegal m immigrants in our townships, you know, and things like that. But in terms of going with your other question about uh, collecting signatures, I mean, it, it's something that had to be done. You know, we, you run around. Luckily, what made it easier is that, I mean, I'm from the area. I'm from Mitsimaholo. I'm mm -hmm. from the district of Fisley Derby. So, you know, you, you know, it's about Kasiha, yeah. you know, so you go around asking for signatures. And it's something that actually came out of, you know, a, a, a conversation I had with, with a podcaster MacGyver mm. on Podcast in Chill. Mm -hmm. And it's something that sounded like people thought we were joking, but we actually did it. You know, yeah. we collected signatures and we met the deadline for the IEC. Yeah, you know. well, congratulations. It's no, not, it's not an easy feat. Tell us a little bit about your background um, mm. and really what you think you're going to be bringing to the electorate. Look, um, I come from uh, Zambela, Misimaolu, mm -hmm. grew up in an area where it's predominantly ran by the ANC. You know, we've seen service delivery. We've seen a lot of things happen there. I grew up, uh, uh, you know, with, with, with not really much of a choice in terms of careers because, I mean, when you look at our area, it's pretty much an industrial area and not everybody wants to go into industry. Mm. But the other option that was there in the free state was going to the agri space, which I obviously had no interest in. So I opted to go into the media space. Yeah. And it has been very grateful to me, you know, um, worked for everybody from Black Rage Productions to IFM, Metro FM, MTV, yeah. the SABC, yeah. and now we're here. But in the background, uh, because of the area that you grow up, you get involved in community issues, you get involved in community meetings. Uh, my brother was a ward councillor at some point. You know, um, he held a couple of regional seats in the, in the, in the, in the ruling party. Yeah. You know, so it's something that's always been there. But also, growing up, just, you know, conversations with, with, with your parents, you know, finding out that, you know, my mother's brother, my uncle, was shot by the apartheid police right at the gate. Kuntu, you know? Of your home. Of my home. Yeah. Um, I mean, they still, my aunt still cries when she talks about mm. it. So things like that, they conscientize you. And you look at, you know, how our people are living versus how they're supposed to be living. Mm. I mean, when you look at my grandmother's house, it's literally, it's the house, you jump the road, it's a hostel. You know, and you know, growing up in those days, there's mm -hmm. a hostel next door, just next to your house. Yeah. It's a lot of people from different areas, different languages. Cultures, yeah. Different cultures. So it, it, it shapes your mind. Even though, you know, you have parents that do their best, they take you to schools outside Kasi so that at least you can be exposed to different things. So th all those factors, you know, they, they shape you. You go to school, you meet these people, they live in a particular way, and then you go back home and you face your realities. Yeah. You know, at some point, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the things that shaped me. Like, we used to sit in Khonwaga, you know, and go sell, because we, we used to sell scop. Mm. Uh, so we'd sit Kostrati, you know, uh, selling scop, selling pony, you know, to people going to Sassol to work. So all those experiences, they change who and you are. A, yeah, that's yeah. a very entrepreneurial family then that you're coming from with, with a rich yeah. history, I suppose, one that is deeply affected by the injustices that our country has seen. Yeah. Um, but you, you touch on, you know, having family members that have been part of the African National Congress. Why yeah. not go that route? Is that not a concern for you, considering that the African National Congress has considered the Free State quite a bit of its stronghold, or one of its strongholds, certainly. Um, yeah. and, and, and should you get that seat, you know, the parties that you are willing or not willing to work with? Yeah. Look, uh, obviously, by, I mean, you... you <laughs> by default you grow up in the movement but mm -hmm. proximity gives you access to things that any other person wouldn't see and you sit there and you wonder you're like but you know this is not the promises that were made 
you know, execution. I'll make you an example. Yes. My former branch, because I'm a former member now. I haven't been expelled yet. Yes. But, you oh, know. you have not been expelled. So you are still a member of the African National Congress. They haven't expelled me yet. <laughs> I'm, you, I'm you, assuming I'm expelled. you not leaving the movement? I'm assuming I'm expelled. Okay, but you have not been expelled yet. No, I have not received. Why not, why not leave the movement? I have. I mean, that's why I'm here. Okay. All but right. uh, okay. no one's ever said to me, you are out, Ufedi, you know. So I guess it is what it is. I'm here. Okay. You know. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's quite difficult. You wouldn't even try to talk to the elders in that area because they'll tell you, mm. you know, so you don't even try, but you help to speak to different people. You speak to the youth that are unemployed. You speak to people that utilize mainly our public systems, which is our normal people. You know, you go to a clinic, uh, you know, sometimes you go to a public hospital, you know, um, you get there, it's a Tuesday morning, you know, you're told that the specialist you're looking for, the doctor you're looking for only comes on Fridays. So what happens to the rest of the days? Mm. But if we had to really, really, really deep, deep and look at one of the, the real reasons why we did this, I mean, you look at the state of the municipalities in the free state, right? It's really, you know, the entire cocktail human settlements department should be put under administration. You look at for example, you look at nine municipalities that account for something like 2.8 billion, uh, billion of an, uh, unauthorized expenditure. Mm. And I want to paint this picture to you. You look at a, a municipality like Macedonian, it has 538 million rand of unauthorized expenditure. Mm. Uh, Tokoloho, 456 million. Nala, 343 million. Machaibe, 322 million. Dikaibe, 294 million. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And we know where that money went. It went to comrades, you know, who are supposed to be changing the lives of our people, and they don't. You have an MEC, um, who's also the deputy provincial chair in the ANC, who also chairs the, 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 the deployment committee. Mm. And we know what uh, the Zondo Commission said. You know? So instead of fixing these municipalities, you find they see it as an opportunity to further deploy uh, comrades in, this, in, 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 in these institutions. The crazy thing is that all these numbers that I'm giving to you were presented by the Auditor General to the provincial legislature. So they know these things. Yeah. So they're just quiet. So yeah. let me ask you this, because I think a lot yeah. of candidates and political parties do this, where yeah. we look at the problem, right? Yeah. What is the other solution that you offer? I mean, you give mm. those numbers of, of, of monies that have simply yeah. gone down the drain in all of those yeah. municipalities. Um, I think of basic services, for instance. Yeah. I think the Free State uh, sent back uh, 85 million rand from the Department of Health. That's the Free State alone, 85 yeah. million rand unspent in the Department and of Health. And that's not all. What's the solution? The so where, where's the, how do you fix the administrative issues then? Look, uh, it's, uh, you, you start with existing resources that are available, mm. right? You want to have the SIU almost in every single department in the free state because it's that bad, right? Mm -hmm. And the biggest issue as well, when you go to the Auditor General's report, talks about maladministration. It means that the wrong people are doing the wrong jobs, right? You find someone who's been appointed as a municipal manager or as an HOD or a chief director or supply chain manager. Um, they know that they're supposed to deliver on the mandate, which is obviously final funds and certain jobs to certain people. So those people are not accountable to you and I. They're not accountable to the people that actually voted for them to be there. They're accountable to, 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 to the organization that deployed them there. Watch, um, give, give us two years. You'll see the amount of corruption that's happened in the past two months because there's so much uncertainty because people don't know whether they're coming back or not. Right? Mm. We know the struggles that Chile House is having with finances, with salaries. But here's, gov here's the government purse. And I'm telling you now, the CFOs, the municipal managers, the HODs are doing what they can to ensure that the NC has enough money to campaign. It's bad, it's wrong, it shouldn't happen. You spoke about money that's going back home, uh, that's going back to the National Treasury. The human settlement, I mean, there's a housing crisis in the free state. The Human Settlements Department just returned 600 million rand. Yeah. 600 million rand. I mean, that, that money could have used for other things, right? Let me make you another example. You look at, um, for example, the small business department, right? Um, and this information is available on the National Treasury website. The free state government owes service providers 1.5 billion rand. It's a total of 8,077 uh, unpaid invoices. So your solution is to bring law enforcement into some You of bring law enforcement. Okay. You ensure that you make sure that the correct people that are supposed to be working, occupying the okay. correct positions. Yeah. yeah, I know that illegal foreigners and townships is one yeah. of your big talking points. Yeah. What's, what, what do you propose we do there? Look, I think that there's a, that, that there's a big misunderstanding around the issue because every time you speak about such things, you're labeled xenophobic, right? I personally don't have a problem with, with our, our brothers from across the continent. This continent belongs to the rest of us, to all of us, you know? 
But what needs to be done is that you need to ensure that when you come do your business in our townships, one, do the right thing, go, 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 go rezone, mm. right? Go pay for rezoning, get the, the correct uh, paperwork, register for tax and pay your taxes. Then you can run your business in peace, right? And the, the, the sort of products that you sell, please kindly mm. get the products from the, the re reputable uh, dealers, your macros, etc. I mean, how many times have we had in this country where you find that, you know, kids died from buying biscuits at a particular shop? I mean, right now, two days ago, I think three days ago, there was a story of a, uh, a tuck shop that was selling uh, purified water, mm. and the water was straight from the toilet, mm. right? Mm. But that Shocking. also goes back to the collapse of local government because, remember, our municipality's role is to ensure that pub, uh, public health is, is, is in order. They have to make sure that, you know, if, if you're going to open a tuck shop, you meet all the requirements. If you're going to sell food, all the required requirements are, are, are met. Now, if the health inspectors were doing their jobs, and mm. the health inspectors are from the municipalities, they were doing the, the, the normal walkabouts in every tuck shop, in the, we wouldn't have such problems. Right. So, so there's, there's that gap. But remember, even the health inspector is a cater. You know, he was appointed there to do the right thing. You know, yeah. so he's not going to, you know, do what needs to be done. In fact, in Metsima Hall, at some point, uh, the municipality where I come from, there was, a, there, was, there was an issue of, you know, the people that owned, uh, that owned these tuck shops. They were, you know, they had municipal officials on right. a payroll. right. Okay, so I, 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 I'm, I'm unfortunately yeah. out of time, and I really hope that we uh, were able to, will be able to speak to you again as we get closer yeah. to the 29th of May. Uh, but I think the key points you've made certainly sit on the table, and that is that yeah. we need to see more law enforcement in some of our government uh, yeah. departments and municipal offices, and certainly uh, more enforcement as well of uh, government processes on the ground, uh, that being the resources that we have uh, to give services to people. That there, yeah. uh, candidate running for a seat in the provincial legislature of the Free State, all the best to you, Thank and you. we'll catch up again at The Rock, that's the Results Operating Center.